Hello, and welcome to Better Than Art School. This is a lecture about how to create volume with color change. Now, there's three dimensions of color, and there's hue, the name of the color, there's value, how light or dark the color is, and there's saturation, which is how intense the color is, how chromatic the color is, is it washed out? Uh, this is a painting by Nicholas Uribe, and what he's trying to do is keep all the values the same and just just create a sense of form through hue difference. Um, and it's not, I, I feel like some parts of it, wor it works and some parts of it, it doesn't, but it's, it's very um, impressive that he even tried such a thing because value is what usually creates the sense of volume. So this one on the left, this one on the far left, it's very flat, right? There's no change in it. It's the same value the whole way across. It's a middle value, and so it looks very flat. The one in the middle, it gets much lighter. It goes through uh, half tones, which are light grays. It goes through mid tones, which are middle grays. And then finally, it's a gradient, and then it finally gets into dark. So it starts to feel like there's an illusion there of a sphere. The one on the right is the same basic idea, except for it also has a surface. And that surface does two things. The surface under that sphere anchors it. There's a cash out of there that makes it feel like it's on the surface. Then if, if you notice the difference between uh, the ball in the middle and the ball on the right, the ball on the right has reflected light coming up. So the surface is um, deemed to be kind of a white surface or a light valued surface and it's projecting light up. So the light's coming from up into the right, it hits the surface and it bounces up into the sphere on the right. So this is all done through changes of value because there's no, this is only one dimensional uh, color in, in all three of these, right? It's only the value dimension. There's no hue, which would be like red, yellow, blue, etc., etc., And there's no saturation because you can't have a saturated white or black or gray. Black and white and gray are neutral colors. They're just in one dimension of color. So it's the value dimension that really starts to create the sense of volume. So when you're painting, you're trying to make something pop out. You're trying to make it pop out. Uh, what you're trying to do is successfully manipulate uh, value. Okay. Just remember value to create volume. So on the top here, you've got a gradient, right? So in the real world, what this might look like is a tabletop where the right side of the table is closer to the light and the left side is close, is further away from the light so that you have light progressing across that plane, right? And then just imagine that's wrapping around a form and then you have the sphere below there. They're both blue and but in both cases the change the sense of movement and the sense of reality in a way the the sense of space is created through changes in value all right so if you ask most people the one on the left here it looks like the larger ones are dense and the smaller ones are bumps that's the one on the left and the one on the right it looks like the opposite. The bigger ones are bumps, they project outwards, and the smaller ones are dense. It's actually the exact same picture turned upside down. And this is an even better version of it because the one on the left here, to me and to most people, to most of my students when I ask this, it looks like it's a crater with a little mound on the inside. And then on the second one, it looks like it's kind of a volcano type structure. Again, it's the same picture, just turned upside down. So what does this tell you? It, it tells you that in absence of other information, we generally expect light to come from above. So our, our sense-making eyes and brain, when we're looking at this, we just assume that light comes from above, if, especially if it's an ambiguous situation, right? Because think about it. For the vast majority of time on Earth, light comes from the sky. We don't usually... The reason that people tell scary stories and they put a flashlight under them is they're reversing the regular... Um, our regular expectation of where light comes from, right? So it looks scary because the light's coming from below, right? Okay, so that's that's just something to know. If you're trying to create an image that's easily read, then make sure the light's coming from above, right? If, if you're having trouble with uh, light, you know, when you get better at it, you can start making it come from one side or the other. You can use two light sources. But if you're having trouble with creating a sense of volume through light, just make it come from above or maybe slightly to the right or slightly to the left, but still from above. Okay, so the easiest way to do it, the, like I was just saying, the easiest way to convey a light source is a simple and consistent light source, usually coming from up and to one side. So usually when you're setting up a portrait, you set up the light source like a clip lamp or something like that, where it's coming from up 
uh, above the person and maybe down at a slight angle, right? And that's what's happening in the sphere. Okay, so here's the breakdown. Here's how this works. And this is one of those things where once you see it, you'll see it everywhere. Okay, so there's a light area, there's a shadow area, cast shadow, okay? So one, two, three. I know I'm not using the same numbers they're using because I find the numbers they're using a little confusing. But just take this as, as one light area, right? Now within the light area, you have the highlight, which is the, the brightest bright. It's the only place where you're going to approach white. Although if you're painting with color, I always say mix a little blue into the white if it's a cool light or mix a little yellow into the light if it's a warm light. White and black paint both flatten out areas if they're painted by themselves. Because remember, white and black are unidimensional colors. They're not really colors. They don't have hue. They don't have saturation. They just have value. So in other words, you want your light to give you more information than just uh, value. You want it to, if you're using color, you want it to have cool or warm, something like that, some other bit of information. Anyway, so you get the highlight. And just imagine throwing a rock in the pond and there's a splash and then there'll be these concentric circles coming out from that splash, right? That's kind of how this works. What, what's happening is the splash would happen here and the concentric circles are coming out to here. And each concentric circle in this case is going to get a little darker, right? It's going to get slightly darker as it's moving away from the highlight. And then at some point it turns away from the light. It's called the terminator shadow or the core, core shadow core form shadow, that what, what's happening is the object, whatever it is, is, is turning away from the light there. And that's where the darkest dark is. Okay, and then you get reflected light, if, especially if you have a light surface that it's sitting on. And of course you have the cast shadow. Okay, so within the light area you have highlight and then you have concentric uh, gradient, uh, gradation where it starts lighter and it gets darker. In the dark area you have the darkest area in the core shadow and then you have reflected light which is a little bit lighter. And you have the cast shadow, which is more of a flat type of uh, value. But the cast shadow will be very clear and crisp here. The edges will be sharper. And as it moves away, it'll kind of kind of filters out. You know, it kind of it breaks up a little bit. Okay, and this this pattern is seen in every everything. Once you see it, it's sort of this deeper strata of reality where it doesn't matter what the shape is if if the, you know, you have a light source, you have an object, right? There's going to be a light area, there's going to be a shadow area, there's going to be a core shadow, reflected light, cast shadow. You're going to see that over and over and over again. If you're painting a portrait, the nose might cast a shadow on the side of the cheek, you're going to have the same stuff. You're going to have the light area, the shadow area, the cast shadow, the reflected light. So this, this is sort of uh, just how reality works. This is how light and form work. And this is a picture I took from Zion Canyon, or Zion National Park. Um, and the one on the left is the real color in the photo. I didn't change the color at all. And you can tell you can tell how deep the space is. You can tell how to traverse this space. And then of course, on the right side, I uh, altered the color. But notice, I only altered the hue. I, I changed it from yellows to more red violets and reds. And but even though this isn't how we normally expect the world to look you can traverse it. You can understand how to move through the space because the value pattern is consistent. Okay, so this is a little demo video from Will Kemp. What he did is he, he did a ground color of yellow. He drew the um, apple and then he painted around it with grays and then he painted just real simple, kept the yellow being the light area here um, and then painted a shadow area and then he developed some more after that. So within the light area now he's got the highlight and the progression of light within the shadow area. Now he has the core shadow and the reflected light and the cast shadow and all that. So it's kind of a simple breakdown. <clears throat> this is a really kind of a quick apple painting I did to get kind of give this same sense. So this is like the quick drawing and I did it with paint. It's burnt sienna and ultramarine mixed together. Painted the basic color kind of flatly painted the reds in the apple. Anyway, slowly develop it and and then here at the end put in a little more highlight to it. Okay, this is a painting I did in art school. And this is this painting was uh, a real moment for me because it was the first time I really thought about the light as an active member of the painting, like an active element in the painting. And the light just hits hits him in the front of the face and then it turns the form. There's reflected light coming up under his chin, for instance. And 
this this painting kind of caused me to look at light and form differently. I, I was looking for areas of reflection and areas of transparency, trying to keep the, keep the lights opaque and the shadows transparent. This is a, a painting by Alex Russell Flint. And this, this one does a really good job of showing how light, it's the change in value, the subtle changes in value that turn forms, okay? If you really study a good painting, if you really study a masterful portrait or any other subject matter, you can start to see that. All right, there's a otter with a shark mask. Okay, uh, see you next time.